Why do people hate this game? I think Sonic Advance 3 is brilliant. I'm not joking. Why do so many Sonic fans hate this game? Is it Johnny's fault? I think this is one of the best and most underrated Sonic games I've ever played. Like, seriously. I love Sonic Advance 3 so dang much. Okay, so before I start this video, you're probably wondering why aren't I reviewing Sonic Advance 2? Because I hate it. Honestly, if you want to know what my thoughts on Advance 2 are, go watch IKG's review of the Advance Trilogy, because he pretty much summed up all the problems I had with Sonic Advance 2 in a nutshell. Okay, how many times have I recommended this review on my channel, IKG? Anyways, Sonic Advance 3 was released in June 2004 to commemorate the Sonic franchise's 13th anniversary. The game was developed in a span of nearly two years after Sonic Advance 2 was released. The first time I got to play Sonic Advance 3 was, in fact, on the PSP of all systems. My cousin had a modded one with a bunch of emulators on it, so it ended up having a GBA emulator that just so happened to have Sonic Advance 3. First time playing it, I remember having a lot of fun with it. I think I made it about as far as the second zone until I had to stop playing it. A few years later, I got an actual copy of the game and played through the whole thing, even getting all the emeralds, and I absolutely loved it. Why? Well, let's have a look. The plot of Sonic Advance 3 involves Dr. Eggman trying to get all the Chaos Emeralds, again, so he could try to build his own utopia, Eggman Land, which, spoiler alert, won't happen for another four years. So Sonic and the gang have gotta stop him, you know, the same old, same old. While trying to stop Eggman, they come across a gizoid named Gemeral, built by Dr. Eggman. Gemeral was apparently reconstructed after another gizoid, Emeral, which was a main character from Sonic Battle. Interesting how closely connected the handheld games are, continuity-wise. Spoilers, I mean, you saw this coming, but Sonic and company stop Dr. Eggman and Gemeral, though in the true ending, Gemeral uses all the Chaos Emeralds from Sonic to morph into a powerful being. Thankfully, Sonic is still able to use the Emeralds to go super, and in a rare moment for the franchise, teams up with Dr. Eggman to stop this super Gemeral. They defeat Gemeral, who kinda just crashes on the beach somewhere. However, Gemeral is taken in and repaired by Tails, who gives Gemeral to Cream and her mother Vanilla as sort of a new best friend for them. I love happy endings. Advance 3's story is simple, but it also has a lot of layers to it, which is pretty impressive for a handheld title at the time to pull off. The cutscenes are really cute, and we often get fun interactions whenever you unlock certain characters at the end of zones. The sprite work in these cutscenes look phenomenal, about as good as they could have looked on the Game Boy Advance screen. That image of Cream hugging Jimro in the final cutscene is sort of my permanent Twitter banner now. It's just one of my favorite moments in the whole series. So Advance 3 had a fun story. Now how does the game play? Sonic Advance 3 uses the same gameplay style as the last two games, with its own new features and improvements to boot. For starters, we have a brand new partner system implemented. This allows you to pair up any of the five characters you can play as in the game. These characters include Sonic, duh, Tails, Knuckles, Cream, and Amy! By the way, in Advance 2, you couldn't play as Amy unless you collected all the Chaos Emeralds with all four characters. So pretty much no one got to play as Amy in Advance 2. The only way I was able to record footage of her was by emulating the game with a 100% save file. Even then, Amy's just a Sonic clone with some okay but lackluster hammer moves. So yeah, not worth the effort of unlocking. Screw you, Advance 2. Amy in Advance 3 is thankfully unlocked after clearing Zone 4, and she's a whole lot better in this game. Depending on who you're paired up with, each of the characters have a variety of different movesets. This is one of the many reasons why I love the partner system. Sonic and Co. can still use their normal moves, but again, depending on who you're paired with, you can get different moves. I usually just pair Sonic and Tails because they're the default. You can use a partner move by holding the R shoulder button. This allows the partner to hop in your hands, and letting go of R will make you do a certain move. It's different for most characters, but for Sonic and Tails, letting go of R can cause Sonic to slam dunk Tails and launch straight into the air. I love this move. It's amazing for skipping areas. There's so many shortcuts to be made with this. So yeah, the partner system has a lot of expansion to provide with each new character you unlock. There are some kind of meh combinations, but I would argue that most of them are pretty good and fun. 
A lot of people actually turn on this game because of the partner system and say it completely ruins the game just because there are bad combinations. Guys, if you see a combination you don't like using, here's a great idea. Don't use them. Wow, crazy, right? It's not really a big deal, and the levels themselves can really make the gameplay more fun. There are seven zones in this game, which are Route 99, Sunset Hill, Ocean Base, Toy Kingdom, Twinkle Snow, Cybertrack, and Chaos Angel. Route 99 is a fun introduction level. It's like a 2D city escape. How could I hate this? Sunset Hill is a wonderful zone, and it's really beautiful. Ocean Base is... alright. Kind of difficult, and there are a few Crusher segments that can catch you off guard at first. Apart from that, decent level. Toy Kingdom is sort of the colorful middle point for the game, sort of how we'd usually get a casino-themed level at this part of the game, but this time it's taking the form of a... Toy Kingdom. Gotta say, I love the choice of colors here. There's a lot of fun set pieces too. Just an all-around fun zone. Ah, I love Twinkle Snow! One of the best snow levels in any Sonic game. It's so damn pretty! Look at the background, look at the blue! So colorful and great! Cybertrack is pretty cool. It's the techno-based level that has some surprisingly fun anti-gravity segments in it. Which is interesting because I'm usually not a fan of these type of mechanics in 2D. But Advance 3 nailed it here. Chaos Angel is a great final zone, but it does drag on for a bit. I will say it's a very unique final stage for this game. Usually most Sonic games end with a death egg or just a machinery type level. But for Advance 3, they tried something different and I think it worked out really well. If there is one thing I'd change about this zone, I'd swap Acts 2 and 3. Act 3 is an auto-scroller and doesn't really fit for a final level. Act 2 definitely feels more grand. I'd even go as far to say it's one of my favorite acts in the game. Then again, you could just play Act 3 before Act 2 if you wanted to. How? Well, Advance 3 introduced another new idea. Hub areas! Yep, you can run around these little hub areas and jump into whichever act of a zone you want to play first. This is a really cool idea. I think Dimps pulled this off really well. They're small and compact enough to where you won't get lost in them, which is very nice. I have heard some people say they're difficult to navigate in, but I personally disagree with that. Now for the level design. This is where people seem to be split on this game. Some people say it's great, other people say it's god-awful and there's too many bottomless pits and crusher segments. For me, I personally love the level designs. Every level is filled with all sorts of routes and hidden items to find. What I think the problems that a lot of people who hate this game seem to have is they probably liked Advance 2 more. Like, Advance 2 is probably their favorite and all. Nothing wrong with that, but I would argue it's not really fair to approach Advance 3 as if it'll play exactly like Advance 2. Advance 2 was filled with a lot of non-stop speed segments. You were mostly just holding right to win. Every level was like this, and I personally think it's a lazy way of doing level designs for 2D Sonic. It sort of reminds me of the autopilot 3D segments in Sonic Forces, you know? I think 2D Sonic has a lot more potential than just hold right to win. But I know people have differing preferences, so you can't really please everyone. Oh well. For me though, I think Sonic Advance 3 has some of the best 2D level designs in any Sonic game. Let me explain. A lot of Sonic Advance 3 consists of platforming, segments where you gotta slow down and jump on some platforms, or maybe even explore environments in order to reach the goal. Yeah, Advance 3 has a lot of exploration, and it does a really solid job with it. The different pathways also add a lot to the experience because it can seriously add a lot of replay value to the game, making each revisit unique with whichever route you want to venture through. When you finally get this mindset of pacing yourself accordingly, whenever you do get into segments where you can run fast, I gotta say, it's pretty goddamn gratifying. That is how you do it. Speed is supposed to be a reward, not something you're handed so easily. I love running fast and all, but if that's literally all you're gonna be doing in the game, where's the reward? Where's the substance? I'm gonna get bored easily. Something else I notice about Advance 2 is that after a certain zone, even going fast punishes you because suddenly that game wants you to pay attention and mind your surroundings. Otherwise, you're gonna keep dying. It tries to have its cake and eat it too, but Advance 2 just fails at it so hard. 
and I think Advance 3's level designs did this way better. I'd almost say Advance 3 perfected this way of structuring the levels. The game doesn't want you to mindlessly hold right, it asks the player to be on their feet for everything. Once you master this way of playing it, then you'll realize, huh, there really isn't a whole lot of crusher segments like most people have been saying about this game. I know I am asking for the impossible for most of the Sonic fanbase to relax and approach this game with a more chillaxed mindset than a we gotta go fast attitude, but come on y'all, this game ain't that bad. One thing I especially like about Advance is that it takes a lot of ideas from the adventure games, especially since these were made in the same time period. Like remember this thing from Ocean Base? It kind of reminds me of this thing from Adventure 2 and Skyrail. What is this thing? Another thing that further highlights the adventure era is the grind rails. Grinding was kind of established since the first game. In Advance 1, it was a very rare set piece that only really Sonic and Amy could use. The only time it really happened was in the first zone. In Advance 2, however, it was greatly overused and not to mention the grind rail didn't even function that well. It came off more annoying than fun to use most of the time. In Advance 3, however, thanks to the much improved level designs, the grind rails are much better implemented here. Not to mention they function so much better than they did in Advance 2, so they're incredibly helpful and actually fun to use. This is the first time in a 2D Sonic game where I felt that grind railing was really cool. I think that's all I have to say about the level designs in this game. I don't know what else to say. There are just moments during this game where I just had a smile on my face. This game just makes me so happy, even during the more frustrating moments. But I don't even hate the game when I encounter these parts. Why? Well, when I do end up feeling fatigued by a video game, I do this amazing method called taking a break. Why do most people forget to do this? If you've been playing a game for so long that you're starting to get sick of seeing slash playing it, then maybe stop playing it for a while. Of course you're gonna end up hating the game if you keep on playing it, come on now. Moving on, the soundtrack! I love Sonic Advance 3's soundtrack so much! It's so catchy and perfect, I'd easily say it's the best of the whole trilogy. Advance 1 still has a great soundtrack, and I'll even say Advance 2's soundtrack was the best part of that game. It was really catchy and energetic like a Sonic soundtrack should be. The soundtrack for Sonic Advance 3 though, is just so well constructed and composed. Every single music piece is brilliant and fits their environments amazingly. Even for the Game Boy Advance's sound chip, it sounds great. Though again, I'd highly recommend the remaster edition of the soundtrack, since it really helps show how great the GBA instruments sound. Even from just the opening menu, you can hear how well made the soundtrack is. Just listen to that 32-bit banjo. I swear to god, it sounds like I'm hearing a banjo. I love Route 99's fast pacing. This music track would even get a slight remix in Generations. Like, that is how good this level's music is. There's even Green Hill Zone remixes for all the Sunset Hill levels, which further adds on to this zone's theme of bringing Sonic back to his roots and reminding us of his past in a really special way. That's how it's done, baby. Love this remix. Twinkle Snow especially benefits from the soundtrack too. The music here sounds about as beautiful as the level itself. Can someone do a remix of this using a piano and violin combo? Please? 
Chaos Angel is the last one I'll highlight. I love how grand the music sounds in this zone. Act 3 is my absolute favorite since at this point, the music sounds more intense and epic here. Just wish the actual level could have been that too. Still though, this is a fantastic piece of level music. <laughs> The soundtrack for Sonic Advance 3 is just incredible. It's a fantastic send-off for this old style until Sonic Rush turns it into Jet Set Radio. Now, I love Sonic Rush's soundtrack, don't get me wrong, but I also appreciate a good, regular Sonic-sounding soundtrack whenever we get one. Moving on! The boss fights in this game are really interesting. Almost all of them involve these clever ways of figuring out how to hit Eggman. A lot of the bosses are just really creative. I love the Jack in the Box one a lot. The one where you bounce the spears back at Eggman is also great. Plus the rowing one highlights a feature that I love about the partner system that's also kind of broken. Even when off screen, your partner can kill enemies for you. Which includes getting easy hits on Eggman in all the fights. Which I find both hilarious and a ton of fun. I love this game so much, you guys. The one boss I will say I'm not too big on is the Twinkle Snow boss. If any of you have played this game, you'd understand why. But for first time players, when you get to this point, make sure you've mastered your platforming skills because otherwise you're fucked. Holy shit. So the partners are really useful in these fights. Hell, I could even use Tails' tails as an attack when flying, which is how I chose to stop the pre-final boss. So yeah, enjoy learning that exploit. Before I discuss the true final boss, we gotta talk about one final thing, emerald hunting. This is how it works. First off, you gotta find Chow. In each zone, there are 10 Chow you need to look for, which sounds a little tedious and... okay, it kind of is. However, one thing I like about the Chow in Advance 3 over the Gold Rings in Advance 2 is that once you collect the Chow, you never have to recollect them, and the game auto-saves your progress. So you don't even have to finish the level after getting all the Chow. You can pause, hit back, then choose another act to go look for more Chow. This simple feature makes me not mind looking for the Chow. I did get stuck a couple of times, but some helpful Sonic fans did create these guides to help find all the Chow, so if you're struggling to find some, just look these up. Another highlight for Advanced 3's level design is that the explorative parts actually made me stumble across a few Chow while on my adventure, which was always a fun surprise. Also, I love the little soundbite whenever you pick up a Chow. Oh, Oh shit! How the fuck did I almost forget? Sonic Advance 3 had voice acting! Well, partial voice acting, but all the characters have these fun little voice clips which just makes me smile a lot. Why? Because this game is using the Adventure Cast, which was my favorite voice cast. So Ryan Drummond is Sonic, William Corkery is Tails, Scott Dreyer is Knuckles, Jenny Dilliard is Amy, and the late Dean Bristow is Dr. Eggman. What is kinda sad though is that this would end up being Dean Bristow's final voice role since he would pass away a few months after the game got released. Really sad. This would also be the last time Drummond and the rest of the adventure crew would be used to voice all these characters as well. Huh. This game really was the end of an era. Also, I went to Sonic Revolution this year! I got to meet a couple of my friends in person for the first time, and I also got to meet Ryan Drummond himself! He signed all my Sonic games that I brought, including Battle and Advance 3. Yes, I made him sign the GBA cartridges. He was like the nicest guy ever, and it was so gratifying to finally meet him in person. It was so great, honestly. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, that's all I wanted to bring up. I'm done. Uh, Where was I? Oh yeah, Emerald Hunting. After you finish finding all 10 Chow in a zone, you're granted permission to collect the special key in any act of the zone. Obviously, the special key is used for activating the special spring which is hidden in each hub area. How do you find the special key? Well, my best advice is just play any of the acts normally, because you'll eventually come across the key, sometimes just out in the open for grabs. It's pretty great that they made getting the keys designed this way, and not overcomplicating it by putting them in hard to reach locations. Also, no, you can't collect one key in another zone and use it in a completely different zone. That's kinda... cheating. But you can stock up on keys, which is nice, and can help give you multiple tries at the special stages and trust me, you're gonna need them. 
The special stages in Sonic Advance 3 look really great for the GBA, but the depth perception can be pretty bad here, for most people at least. For me, the first time I played these stages, I hated them. I thought they were irritatingly bad. Though on my second attempt at these stages, I actually ended up beating most of them in just one try. The only two that gave me trouble were, expectedly, stages 6 and 7. Which makes sense, they are the last two. I guess, just be good at placing yourself for the rings. And definitely try to get these boost segments down to a T because they really help with beating these stages since they could double your rings. So yeah, the special stages are okay. Just a really tough challenge when you play them at first. They are miles better than Advance 2 special stages and that's all that matters. Okay, so after collecting all 7 Chaos Emeralds, Sonic goes super and teams up with Eggman for the true final battle of the trilogy. This final boss is... pretty good. Confusing at first, but once you realize you gotta charge up Eggman, then dash at Gemerald's eye a bunch of times, it becomes a total cakewalk. I really love this final battle. It does feel very grandiose, and it's one of the most memorable parts of the game for me. One thing I love about all the boss fights in this game is that they just give me a good YES feeling whenever I beat them. And that feeling definitely was present when I beat this final boss. Such a great way to end this amazing game. I guess with all that said, Sonic Advance 3 is the best out of the Advance trilogy to me. There's just so much here that I love. I love the direction the level designs take, I love the soundtrack, the voice acting, the art style, the boss fights, the hub areas, just... I love this game, you guys. There's just so much here for me to really admire. If a game can get me to smile most of the time while I play it, then I think that counts for something. This isn't just the best out of the Advance trilogy, but I think this is Dimp's best Sonic game, hands down. It has so much heart, and I think this game gets a sour reputation by people who probably didn't give it a chance? There's a lot more here than just, uh bottomless pits and crusher segments. The game is so much better than you'd probably think. Sonic Advance 3 is one of the best Sonic games ever made. It may not be perfect, but Sonic Advance 3 is a game that has greatly grown on me over the years. I loved it when I first played it, and I love it even more after all this time of playing it. Advance 3 is great. Seeing that emotional, touching ending made completing this game feel so great. I love the idea that Gemerald went from this huge threat to this friendly robot that became Cream's new best friend. It's adorable. And it further highlights another theme this game likes to have, which is... Everyone deserves a happy ending. No matter who you are. Okay, that may not be the intended feeling, but that's honestly how I felt when completing this game. Sonic Advance 3 is just great, you guys. It really does feel like the end of an era. It almost made me tear up whenever I realized that. This is not only the last time I'll ever get to hear my favorite Eggman voice actor, but it's also probably the last time I'll get to hear Ryan as Sonic, Scott as Knuckles, and Jennifer as Amy. It's just... sad. But it makes me happy. I don't know how to describe it, but this game just makes me happy. I guess I'm just happy to have found such a great game in one of my favorite franchises, which nowadays is seen as a laughing stock. So I think that's why I love this game so much. Kinda reminds me for my love for Unleashed 2. Back to the soundtrack for a bit, that staff roll music is just incredible. Such a perfect way to end this game, end this trilogy. It feels like Dimps is bidding farewell to something, be it this era of Sonic, the Game Boy Advance itself, whatever it is, it just feels really nice. Like the finishing chapter to a book. Just thank you, Sonic Advance 3. Thank you for existing and for making me so happy. You're not like any other Sonic game I've ever played. Nope, not even Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Thank you for being unique and thank you for all the good times. I appreciate this game so much for its pureness and overall great structure. Thank you, 2004 Dimps. Thank you. Also, suck it, Johnny! Hey everyone, I just want to say thank you for watching the video, and if Johnny's watching, I'm really sorry. That was, that was just a joke. I don't want you to be mad at me, I love your content, it's just I heavily disagree with what you said about Advance 3, and I don't think you gave it a fair chance. So, whatever. I also wanted to say I wanted to do this review after I came home from Revolution and found out that Paco had died. 
it was a completely freak accident and I miss him a lot and I just wanted to do like a video that instead of doing a review of Advance 2 which is a game I hate and I would have just been angry most of the time I wanted to do a, a review of a game that I liked which was Advance 3 because I figured if I did a video where I was happy it would be a nice like video to dedicate to Paco hopefully you guys enjoyed that and hopefully somewhere Paco watched it and <laughs> liked it uh I just want to say I, I miss Paco a lot and it's been kind of rough getting over the fact that he's gone but I just want to thank everyone else for all the support I've been getting on social media I want to thank all my friends as well for helping me get through this I think everything's gonna be okay, so thank you a lot for giving me hope and for giving me another chance at moving on. Uh, if you're wondering if the Advance 2 review is gonna happen, I really don't think it's gonna happen anymore. I just, I don't want to play that game ever again. I don't want to think about it. I just don't like it. I don't like Advance 2. Again, just watch IKG's video. This is like the love of time I've recommended that Advance review, but I think Gavin did an amazing job with that, so go watch it. It's really good. I recommend it for a reason. Also, the Spider-Man 2 review is not happening anymore. It's been like two years. You guys need to stop asking me for it because I don't want to make it anymore. I, the passion to make that video is completely dead. So, I'm sorry to say, but it's not happening. I'm really sorry. I should have said that so long ago, but Spider-Man 2 review, not happening. Sorry. <laughs> but anyways, for the next few reviews, I'm not going to be focusing on... Sonic anymore. Instead, I'm going to be focusing on a few collectathon platformers, starting with a certain bear and bird. So, I will see you guys in the next review, and thank you so much for watching. And of course, rest in peace, Paco. I love you and I miss you, and thank you all for watching and for all the support. Take care.